Can you tell the story 40s. about the words Cuddy Sark in Raging Bull? Irwin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened was a, a little, well, Harvey's here. You really want me to tell it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened, Harvey? I got a little, I, you may not believe it, but I got a little obsessive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because we're going to try to mix this picture now. He's going to do the same thing. Watch. <laughs> but what happened was that I didn't really understand. It, it's changed now. Believe me, Thelma was the first time she was uh, editing a feature. She wasn't even in the union yet. We were trying to get her in the union. There was a lot of uh, difficulty there at that time. And so we were at Samuel Goldwyn lot, and we were mixing the film. But I hadn't really thought that much about the sound effects. And there are many fight scenes in the picture. And Frank Warner is such a great sound effects editor. So I'll make a long story short. As we were <laughs> mixing the film, um, uh, and a different style of mix. In LA, they have three men uh, at the board uh, sound effects, music, and, and uh, dialogue. And I, in New York, I was used to one, I think. I, I don't remember. But in any, event, I, I, uh, in any event, what was happening, we all had to know how to work together. And aside from that, um, we were experimenting with sound effects. And also, I was laying in music too late. I was putting music in. I put the, uh, the, the rights on this one for me. Well, when's it going? We're going to mix it in tomorrow. What? Why don't you tell me like two, two months ago? What are you... So we were sort of, uh, you know, because prior to that, music for me in films, Mean Streets, we had gotten the rights to the music because uh, uh, I, I actually designed some of the scenes to the music. Taxi, uh, Alice doesn't live here anymore, the same thing. Taxi driver, Travis didn't listen to music. way in which the world would be different without you, by the <laughs> way. You know, really, even, even Wes Anderson says Oh, Wes, and his use of music is great. He's taken a lot of ideas yeah. about how to use music in film from you. And um, um, so we really didn't have these problems. I mean, in Taxi Driver, Travis didn't listen to music, so the only one I thought was Bernard Herrmann who could do that. Uh, New York, New York, the music goes standards and that sort of thing. So, and um, uh, Kander and Ebb. And, uh, and so by the time we got to Raging Bull, I wanted to use music that I knew, the period and that sort of stuff, and music I had in my old 78 collection from my father that I grew up with. Um, but what happened was that it became, it went on longer and longer than usual. And Irwin, at a certain point, Irwin Winkler, whom I had worked with uh, on uh, New York, New York. By this point, it was shorthand with him, you know, Harf. It was like, it was the first one, New York, New York, we were like, you know. But in the second one, he said, Marty, I said, yeah, I know, I know, all right, all right. So, <laughs> do you really need five more setups? And I go, no, okay, all right, two, okay, well, one. And then that sort of thing. We got to know each other and how to work together very, very, very well, I think. But there was one night, we were just working too hard. And um, there's one scene where Pete Savage, uh, his real name was Pete Petrillo. He was the best friend of Jake LaMotta, and he co-wrote the book, Raging Bull. And Pete was in the film, and he's at the Copacabana Lounge, the real bar. We got back the real bar, and also the bartender, <laughs> who was the, 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 he's still around, he's on, he's on Mott Street, Mickey LaFaro, who was the father of one of my closest friends, who unfortunately, he, he died a few years ago. But Mickey is still here, and he was in that little thing I did um, for, the, for the, um, uh, the concert, concert for... Um, the September 11th thing, and uh, Mickey says hello and all this. Stuff. And Mickey was the bartender at the, at the Copa Lounge, and the Copa Lounge was a tougher place than the, than the uh, downstairs area. Downstairs, and it was, a, it, was a, it was a place of mythology for us young kids in the Lower East Side. And so, uh, Pete Petrillo had to say, certain people ordered Cuddy Sark, and he said, Mickey, Cuddy Sark. And at a certain point, uh, we were mixing, there, were, there was piano in the background, uh, there were noise people, all kinds of effects. And I just couldn't hear Mickey. Well, I, I couldn't, couldn't hear Mickey. Hear Cuddy, um, and Cuddy Sark. Cuddy yeah. Sark. I can hear Cuddy Sark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but it was Mickey. And, uh, and Irwin's standing behind me. He so, said, Marty, we've got to get this reel into the lab. The guy said, but people have to know it's Mickey. He said, we don't know Mickey. So it was a matter of, it was a matter of my ear going at that point. And so at one point, so I, I think it was 11.30, yeah, 11.30 at night or something. We had to get it out another 15. I just wanted one more pass. That's all it was. No big deal. So anyway, you know, <laughs> so I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, granted, I may have gone overboard this it, time because I turned, I turned around and I said, all right, nice. if Mickey's name is under this picture, take my name off the film. That's it. <laughs> oh, now, come on. And, I, and so Irvin started laughing. I walked out. Irvin was okay. It's not Marty's movie anymore. <laughs> so I came back in. Now, listen to me. All right, Mickey's there. All right. So no, it was just that people would know who saw the picture, who, who saw that place. And, uh, and sometimes you get to the point where you get too tired and people, come on, come on, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go. And there's a minor thing, you just, if you have the patience to go, and these were punch, uh, touch-ups too, they were not yeah. a whole reel. You can punch in for, a, for another 15 minutes of work, let's say. But in any event, that, uh, that